Last time on Building Resilience, we were flying around above the city of Minneapolis admiring what a great job we're doing. On the ground, we were flashing holes in the wall, putting up an invisible WRB, and installing two types of rain screen systems. One of them is called Slicker Max, made by Benjamin Ogdike. It's an entangled matrix drainage mat made from polypropylene. It offers excellent drainage and compression resistance. Slicker Max is being used wherever the 3 quarter inch PVC Paint Pro panels from AZEC will be installed. The other rain screen is also from Benjamin Obdike called Batten UV. Batten UV. It is being used over the black Invisirap so that they disappear behind the open joint cladding system also from AZEC. Here we have the intersection between our Invisirap WRB and our ventilated rain screen system with our home slicker Max, which then continues on around the house. Now that portion of the house, as you can see, our, as the zip system is our WRB. And technically this side of the house also has the zip system as our primary WRB, but because we're doing an open joint cladding system, we also have this Invisirap building paper, which will give us that beautiful shadow line behind our cladding system. We also have this very unusual um, flashing tape, which some people might be familiar with, but I think a lot of people aren't. And it's kind of a fabric-y looking material. Um, and it's slightly vapor open. This product is also vapor open. It's important in a cold climate. Now these battens are from Benjamin Obdike. They're the Batten UV product. Batten UV. It's a UV stable black plastic because of course we don't want to see the strip from the outside so this will help keep it invisible. But you'll notice it's got all of these holes in it and that allows air to pass horizontally through the system as well as vertically. So I'm in favor of either using something like this entangled matrix type system that allows air to flow every direction back here and it's really hard to ever cut it off because it runs behind everything and you don't have to monkey around with individual furring strips. And if you have to do furring strips, something like these core vented UV battens Imagine UV that allow air to move through the system this way and through the system this way, reducing the likelihood that you will um, stop the airflow in there somewhere, create a bottleneck, and not get the ventilated rain screen action that you're looking for. The battens are stapled to the house, and now we're ready to do some open joint cladding. The cladding systems are separate but intertwined to some extent. The edges of the Paint Pro panels are trimmed with architectural metal profiles from Tamlin. This means a lot of the cladding layout is done when those architectural profiles are put up. The crew lays out the Tamlin trim profiles to align with windows and other architectural elements. The profiles overlap the Paint Pro panel edges to allow for movement, but the edges of the open cladding system just butt the termination trips. So, this is a PVC deck board, which we're repurposing as a cladding material. And it kind of makes sense because it's already designed to withstand the elements. It's designed to be walked on. It's designed to basically be beat up. And we're putting it in a spot where it's going to get a lot less weather, a lot less UV. It's going to get no foot traffic at all and uh, should last an incredibly long time. So we have three screws at the edges, which pins that piece in place. And then in the field, we have two screws. It keeps it fastened to the structure. A lot, of, a lot of people have questions about expansion and contraction. And I, I learned a lot in this process, actually. So, here's, here's some crazy stuff. We all know that PVC expands and contracts, right? Just like wood. Except that what I learned is that PVC actually doesn't expand so much as it mostly contracts. And 
and this is the crazy bit is that after it's contracted it stops so it goes through this process where it releases how to describe it it's like a piece of wood that's releasing moisture. okay let's just this cut right here and go to the experts michael is summarizing a technical zoom call that we had with azex experts about sustainability pvc and cladding movement yeah so let's talk about expansion contraction because this is like like the one it's probably like if you if you ask somebody what's the achilles heel of the pvc outside of maybe the you know the fact that it's plastic for the people that just don't like plastic it's yep. probably the guys will come back and say it's expansion contraction. Mm -hmm. The trick is is installation, and installation plays a, a key role in limiting the amount of expansion contraction that you're going to see. So the first thing that you do is you always want to fasten PVC correctly and make sure you got the right number of fasteners in it. And then the second thing is what we want to do is is all of our butt end or anywhere we're butting PVC to PVC. We want to glue those joints because it's not the expansion contraction that people have the problem with, it's shrinkage. You mean shrinkage? Yes! <laughs> Significant shrinkage. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. So I, that, that's, the, that's usually the complaint. So what is the key to get away from that? It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold outside, always install PVC tight. When, when we've seen problems, it's typically because guys let, installed it in the wintertime, left gaps, expanded back out like it was supposed to that first summer and then all of a sudden it got cold again and then that next winter when it went from winter to summer it never grew back out to its full length you ended up with an eighth inch gaps and and everybody would scratch their head and say now i i went from being an eighth inch gap in the winter to tighten the summer to now i've got a quarter inch gap in the winter and an eighth inch in the summer Mm -hmm. Issue being is that all of that product should have been installed tight because then what happens is that you can constrain the expansion of the product, but you can't stop the shrinkage of it. Got it. But you can constrain it. If you constrain it in place and you always install it tight and you always glue your joints. So what happens is now you've always got a full length board in the summer. And you've only got it maybe an eighth inch in the winter. People don't complain about an eighth inch gap in the winter. They're typically inside their home. But it's in the summer, in the in the in the in the spring, in the fall, when they're outside, all of a sudden the boards start to come back. So expansion contraction goes away from that standpoint of view. Deck boards, our deck boards do the same thing. So we would always tell you to install the product tight. Here's how the open cladding sections go together. Over the hundred-year-old wall sheathing, the Zip System R12 panels provide continuous insulation and weather resistance. At the base of the wall is a base flashing to kick water out and away from the foundation. Because the joints in the cladding are open, the crew installs black Invisirap WRB over the Zip R12. Next come the battens, and then the termination trims are installed as specified on the plants. Open cladding pieces are installed according to a couple of patterns also specified on the plants. Spacer blocks are used to keep the gaps consistent and to speed installation. The cladding is face screwed into the wall sheathing and the screw holes are plugged with Cortex plugs for an invisible look. But invisible fasteners aren't really very useful if the cladding doesn't work and you have to replace it. To that end, Michael got up early one weekend and broke out his scientific garden hose. All right, guys, I have here this very scientific tool. And ran some hose. experiments to test out this open nozzle. cladding hypothesis. All right, hey, we are here at the site of the Building Resilience Show, and I want to show you uh, one of the finished sides of the house. we got panel and soffit all on. We've also got our open joint cladding system installed. <clears throat> the whole thing is finally coming together. And man, does it look sharp. I wanted to show you how this open joint cladding system works because I think that it's new for some folks and that's totally cool. Uh, and for folks who know about already, this is like an upgrade on the concept, in my opinion. We've got Invisirap behind it. So with a black surface, you can't see anything. We've got the UV batten system back there from Benjamin Obdike so that all the boards are held off of the black paper by about three-eighths of an inch. And uh, 
I'm gonna show you how fast, I mean, I think this is pretty obvious, right? How fast it drains. Now the panel system, I can't show you on this side, because it's all closed up. But in the event of a rain, if there was a rain event and water got behind any part of this system, the entire thing can drain out the bottom. So here, bear with me as we look down here, at the bottom of the wall, you're gonna see right there, this little half inch gap. So right here, this is designed to let all the water come flowing right back out. So since it's nice and low down here, I'm gonna use my super scientific hose. And I'm gonna blast this surface with water. I'm gonna pretend that it's raining. And uh, you can see that it's dry down there right now. So this is the first run at this experiment. This isn't really much of an experiment. Here we go. It's raining, it's raining. It's raining really hard. Like, this is the hardest rain ever, and it's like a sideways rain. Hurricane's blowing this water straight into the side of the house. It's getting super wet back there. But that's okay, because you know what's happening on the other end? Well, let's take a look. We get down here, you see all the water draining out the bottom. So not only in this system is the water able to easily drain out the bottom, but every few inches we have a full half inch gap. And that full half inch gap is allowing us to let lots and lots of air flow back behind the cladding system. So we have excellent drainage. Water just really can't get hung up inside the system. Um, and. Uh, the beauty of this particular system is that we're using a PVC deck board. So this is a TimberTech product from ASIC. We're using it as a cladding system here because the problem with open joint ring screen, turn that off, is that the water, I'll show it to you. Here we go, let's go look at it up close and in person. See what happens to the leading edge of the board? It gets wet. And when we see this done with Ipe and the like, well, you know, the water just sits on that leading edge of the board and eventually, I don't care what the board, like what species of wood that board is made out of, it's going to rot. It's going to open up and that board's going to start to fall apart. But with this product, because it's made out of PVC, we're just not worried about its ability to rot because, well, because it can't. With a rot-proof open joint cladding system in place, we're going to wrap this episode of Building Resilience and get ready for next week when we take a closer peek at the Paint Pro panels covering the rest of the house. And that includes below grade as protection for the rigid foam insulation board. Spoiler alert, there's more unscientific science in that episode too. What's going to happen at the bottom of the wall? Well, let's look down here and see. Until then, stay tuned and stay resilient. It is rushing out of the bottom of the cavity. There's a little bit coming over the surface, but the majority of that is coming through out of the bottom of the wall.